Today we're going to be talking about running Linux completely from RAM. What do I mean by that? So when you're running a live distro of Linux, either off a USB flash drive, a CD or a DVD, or even an image off a hard drive, that thing is running in RAM. That thing, that distro is running in RAM, but it's pulling information off that disk, whether it's the CD or flash drive. So everything's loaded to RAM as you use it, but as you're requesting files off the distribution, it's coming from the disk, which nowadays, you know, off a flash drive, especially reading at least is fairly fast. But especially back in the day when it came to CDs and DVDs, it could be fairly slow. So if you load the whole thing to RAM, it's faster. Also a benefit of running everything out of RAM is normally when you boot off a USB flash drive or a CD, you got to leave that disk in the computer. Well, if you boot everything to RAM, you can take the, the USB flash drive or CD out, and the whole thing will still run. You don't need that drive in there anymore, which is nice. So we have speed as a benefit. We have the benefit of not having the disk in the system. But also, if you're really paranoid, you could have a diskless system where you just have the RAM. So normally when you're running off a USB flash drive, uh, lots of times it's a read-only image, so nothing's being written to the disk unless you set up some sort of um, persistent mode. But if you really want to make sure that nothing is being saved to that drive, having no drives in the computer is nice. Everything's written to RAM, so as soon as you turn off the computer, you know that everything's going to be cleared out. So what are the downsides to booting to RAM? Well, one, longer boot time, because you got to wait for the entire image to be copied to RAM. So if you have a distro that's a gig or two gigs, depending on the speed of the flash drive and your computer, it might add 30 seconds, a minute, or even two minutes to the boot time as it loads everything to RAM. Another downside is if you're limited on RAM, you're now using up a lot more of your RAM as disk space. So let's space. say you have four gigs of RAM and you have a distribution that the image is two gigs. Well, you just used half of your RAM just to load up your system. Now you're only running with two gigs worth of RAM, which, especially if you're downloading stuff, could fill up fairly quickly. Because remember, you're not using a hard drive, you're running from RAM. So that's a downside, especially, you know, working with older machines. Now, some distributions automatically boot to RAM, especially lightweight distributions. Uh, I believe Puppy Linux does, uh, DSL does, that's darn small Linux, we'll say that. Um, another one is Slitaz Linux. How do you pronounce Slitaz? How to pronounce dot com. Sleetas. Sleetas? Slitters. Slitters? That doesn't sound right. Ooh, how to pronounce dot com forward slash French. I think it's a French distro. Sleetas. 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 Ooh, the official forums for Slitas. How to say Slitas? Slitas is an acronym. It is, I had no clue, for simple, lightweight, incredible, temporary, autonomous zone? Is that really what it stands for? I had no clue. Here's another answer, how to say slits as? You don't say it, you use it. Some other distributions, such as MX Linux, when you boot up, if you go into advanced options, there's an option to boot from RAM. Gremel Linux, I, I, I don't know how you say it. GRML Linux also has an option in the menu, but not all distributions have the option to boot to RAM in a selectable option. So today we're gonna look at how to boot those distributions from RAM. Now, I mainly stick with Debian distributions. I'm not sure if this, uh, how this works with other distributions, but basically we're just going to pass a flag to the kernel to say boot everything from RAM. And it's super simple. We're gonna do it with a few diff different distributions. So let's go ahead and have a quick look. Okay, we're gonna start out with Gremel Linux. Again, this is one of those distributions that does give you the option. If we go to boot options, we can choose that and we can go down to load to RAM. So it's gonna start the boot process, and here in a moment you'll see that right here it's copying over the file system, 43%, 68%, 100%. So at this point, if I was running on a physical machine, I could unplug the USB flash drive or eject the CD. Uh, this distribution uh, is the smaller version, it's only about a half a gig. And again, I'm running in a virtual machine, so it copied over fairly quickly, but again, the speed of it copying to your RAM will depend on your machine and your flash drive. But uh, it does add to the boot time, but now everything is running completely from RAM, and I just had to choose that selection from the menu. So here we're working with MX Linux, and down at the bottom here you'll see F4 gives you options. If I hit F4, you can see that there is an option to RAM. When I click that, and then I start booting, it will now load to RAM. And again, this is a bigger distribution, so it will take a little bit longer to copy to RAM, about 2 gigs. Again, I'm working in a virtual machine, so it's going pretty quickly, but once this little process here is done, in real life, if I was working with physical hardware, I could unplug a USB flash drive or a CD-ROM. So again, here's another distribution that gives you that option in the boot 
options where you can just select. So moving on to distributions that don't give you the options in the menu. Here we are with Ubuntu. So I'm booting Ubuntu, or however you say it. And uh, you can see we have try or install. Now you'll notice right here, we have the option E to edit. So I'm gonna hit E, and here we have our boot options. And right down here where it says Linux, this is your Linux kernel, and these are the options you're passing to it. All you have to do is somewhere in this line, we're gonna write to RAM, all one word, just like that. And that's all you have to do, and then you can hit uh, F10 to continue, but I'm gonna erase where it says splash and quiet so we can see what's going on. Otherwise, uh, you don't see, it just gives you the little process that it's booting, but it doesn't show you everything. I'm gonna go ahead and hit F10 now, and you'll see in a moment, it will say copying to RAM, or it's gonna be mounting some RAM. Uh, so yeah, copying live media to RAM, and it shows you the command it's running. Uh, it doesn't give you a nice progress bar like the other distributions do, but once this is done copying to RAM, we'll have a system loaded to RAM. So here we are with a Debian Live distribution. Now there is an advanced options here, but there's no option to uh, boot to RAM. So we'll go back and we'll go up to the default option here. Now in some distributions you hit E, but you look right here, it says right at the bottom of the screen, tab to edit the menu entry. So we'll hit tab and it gives us the menu option here. You see Linux is giving us the kernel. And again, all we have to do is hit space to RAM and I can go ahead at this point and hit enter to continue. Now it does have the quiet splash screen. So if I hit that, it's going to show a splash screen again, just like uh, Ubuntu would. Uh, but you can hit delete on the keyboard and it will show you what's going on. And here we go, it's copying the file system to RAM. It does give you a percentage bar, unlike Ubuntu. I don't know why Ubuntu doesn't, I guess it's just Ubuntu. But here we go, we can see 71%, 80%, 93%, and now we are copied to RAM. And again, I could remove that disk uh, if I was booting to actual hardware. Uh, so you can see just adding to the kernel options, that to RAM option will allow you to boot to RAM. Let's try another distribution. Here we are now with Linux Mint. Again, uh, read what it says on the screen, but as you can see, uh, in this case, we're gonna hit E to edit. And just like on Ubuntu, we'll go down to the line with Linux. We'll go to the end and just in here, whoops, we'll type to RAM. Again, you can remove the quiet and splash so you don't get the splash screen, but if you accidentally continue, which in this case, you can hit Control X or F10, just read what it says on the screen and it will tell you what to do. I'll go ahead and hit F10. It will start to boot if the splash screen comes up and I wanna see what's going on. All I have to do is hit, there's different keys, but I'll hit Delete. And here, just like Ubuntu, since this distribution of Linux Mint is based on Ubuntu, it's not gonna give you a percentage on how much is copied, but you can see here that it is mounting some uh, RAM, a temp file system, and then it will load to RAM and now you're running from RAM. So there you have it. Now you can boot your distributions of Linux completely to RAM with no hard disks whatsoever, including the drive that contained the original file system. Now, some distributions, again, do it automatically, usually smaller distributions. Some will give you the options menu, but now, even if they don't give you the option in the menu, you know how to get it to boot to RAM, at least, again, on Debian-based systems. I would assume this would be the same on other distributions of Linux that aren't Debian-based, since this is a, a kernel flag, and we're just passing this information to the kernel, uh, but I haven't tested it out on, like, Arch-based distributions or, you know, Fedora or anything like that. But give it a try. Let me know in the comments if you try it on one of these other distributions and let me know if it works or doesn't work. So I thank you for watching. Again, my website is filmsbychris.com. I'm Chris. That's Chris with a K. Link in the description. I also have a Patreon page. You can also support me through LibrePay, PayPal. I thank you for watching, liking, sharing, subscribing, commenting, all that good stuff. And as always, I hope that you have a great day.